three, two, one, drop. Hi folks, I'm Mr. Canola, and you just saw me drop two different objects to the ground. The first was this roll of string, which has a decent amount of weight to it. The second was this piece of paper, which was obviously much lighter. And very clearly, the roll of string fell to the ground first. However, would this same thing have happened if there was no air in the room around me? Well, Galileo Galilei, a famous Italian scientist, thought that that was true. He thought that if you were to take the roll of string, which was heavier than this piece of paper, and drop them at the same exact time, in an area where there was no air at all, that they would actually fall to the ground at the same rate. Might seem a little strange. However, let's take a look and see if that's possible. Let's think about one thing before we move forward. And that is, what is an area that has no air called? Well, we learned about that before. If you think back to our waves unit, do you remember what it is? An area that has no air is called a vacuum. And so today you're going to see a video in just a moment in which a group of people set up a vacuum, an area with no air, and they try a similar experiment to the one you just saw. Let's have a watch and see if Galileo was really correct that all objects, regardless of their weight, fall at the same rate in a vacuum. Here's a video from the Mythbusters. Maybe you've heard of them before in which they set up their own vacuum and attempt an experiment similar to the one you just heard me discuss. Let's have a watch. The really cool thing about a vacuum is that since there's no air resistance, something as light as a feather is going to drop the same rate as something as heavy as a hammer. So I should be able to put these in the vacuum and see them both hit the ground at the same time if there's a true vacuum. In my left hand, I have a, a feather. In my right hand, a hammer. Commander David Scott carried out his famous test to prove Galileo's hypothesis that all objects are affected equally by gravity. And as Carey explained, with no air resistance, they should fall at the same speed. How about that? Said Mr. Galileo was correct. So as a control to confirm visually they're working with a vacuum, Carrie rigs a clamp to drop them at the same time. And when the guys arrived at NASA in Alabama, the first test they set up for was the hammer and feather rig. I mean, it's good enough. It's not like it's rocket science. I don't think you can say that around here. I guess you're right. The team seals the chamber, but for this control, they don't create a vacuum. Atmospheric pressure in three, two, one. Cool. The All hammer right. hit first. Perfect. So the laws of physics still apply. I dropped the hammer and the feather at atmospheric pressure exactly at the same time. Hammer hit first, feather glided down and hit last. So after the air is removed from the chamber, Carrie is ready to repeat the drop. In three, two, one. Yeah! That is so cool. Yep, when there's no air resistance or drag, all objects are equally affected by gravity and fall at the same rate. So you saw them run the same experiment two different times, and maybe you caught this from the video, but when the trio of people first ran the experiment, they did it while air was still in the chamber. You might have heard Carrie saying that there was atmospheric pressure. That means there's still air inside the chamber. And notice during their first trial, the hammer fell first and the feather fell down second. But then during the second trial, they fell at the exact same rate once the air was taken out, proving, yes, just like the astronaut said, that Mr. Galileo was correct, that all objects will pick up speed at the same rate, regardless of what their mass is. But today, our focus is going to be on a little bit more than just saying that all objects fall at the same rate, assuming that there's no air resistance. Let's take a look at how quickly they speed up using our knowledge of acceleration that we've been focusing on for this past unit. I'm going to draw a very tall cliff. And I'll draw somebody standing on top of the cliff. 
And the purse is, is going to drop a rock, we can imagine, off of the cliff. And so the rock is going to fall all the way to the ground until it strikes the ground below. Now, as the rock falls, is it accelerating? If you said yes, you'd be right. And that's because the rock is going to get faster and faster and faster as it falls. And we know that anything that picks up speed or increases its speed is definitely accelerated because its velocity is changing. So this rock might fall for a little bit of time. Let's say it falls for exactly one second. Well, we as scientists know exactly how fast that rock is going to be moving after that one second. In fact, this rock is going to be traveling at a speed of 9.8 meters per second. How do we know that number? Well, that's the acceleration due to gravity for any object on Earth. Any object, whether it's a rock, whether it's a piano dropped off the cliff, whether it's an elephant dropped off the cliff, it doesn't matter. As long as there's no air resistance, after one second of falling, the object will have a speed of 9.8 meters per second. That means that it has an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. And we say that this number is the acceleration due to or because of gravity on Earth. In other words, any object that falls on Earth will pick up speed at a rate of 9.8 meters per second for each second that it falls. So let's get back to our diagram. After one second, our rock was moving at a speed of 9.8 meters per second. Now, as it continues to fall, it's going to keep getting faster. So after another second has passed, so two seconds after the man originally released it, do you know how fast the rock is moving now? Well, we know that it's going to be moving faster than 9.8 meters per second. And if we think back to our acceleration, an object that is in free fall on Earth is going to pick up 9.8 meters per second of speed for every second that it's in motion. So that means after two seconds, the object will gain another 9.8 meters per second of speed. Let me take out my calculator and do a bit of math here. 9.8 meters per second faster than the original speed of 9.8 meters per second is 19.6 meters per second. So the rock has sped up again. It is still increasing its speed. So we say that it is accelerating. And it has picked up 9.8 extra meters per second of speed for every second that it falls. Let's continue that. If the rock was to continue falling, and let's say now it's moving really fast, just as it's about to hit the bottom. Notice I keep drawing these dots further apart. That's because the rock keeps covering extra distance as it keeps speeding up faster and faster. But now, three seconds into the rock's fall, it is going even faster. How fast, you might ask? Well, remember, the acceleration of any object in free fall on Earth is 9.8 meters per second per second. In other words, any object is going to pick up 9.8 meters per second of speed for each second that it falls. So, one second after it was going at 19.6 meters per second, it's going to be moving 9.8 meters per second faster than that. So, I'll take 19.6 and I'll add 9.8. And I will find that after three seconds, our rock is moving at 29.4 meters per second. This is still keeping up with the idea that if you release the rock at zero seconds and from rest, meaning that your starting speed was zero, that you will gain 
9.8 meters per second of speed for every second that you fall. Because the acceleration of any object that is in free fall on Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared, regardless of what the mass of the object is. So now let's take a look at another example. But let's say this time, rather than dropping a rock and letting the rock fall downwards and pick up speed, let's say this time the person throws the rock upwards into the air. And we're gonna pick a number. You'll see why I'm picking this in a little bit. But let's say they throw the rock upwards at an exact speed of 49 meters per second. Well, we know that this rock is going to slow down as it moves upwards. Do you know how much it slows down by? Well, if you said 9.8, you'd be right. And what we, re what we really mean by that is that the acceleration of the rock is now going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. That's because even though it's moving upwards, it's still technically considered being in free fall on Earth except now its speed is going to decrease by 9.8 meters per second for each second that it's in motion. So if the man releases it at zero seconds with a speed of 49 meters per second, one second later, it's going to be moving at a speed that is 9.8 meters per second less than the speed he threw it up at. So let's do that math. 49 meters per second minus 9.8 meters per second gives us a speed of 39.2 meters per second. Notice that it is 9.8 meters per second slower than it was before. If we continue that pattern one second later, so two seconds into its motion, it will be moving even slower. What's 9.8 meters per second less than 39.4? Uh, excuse me, than 39.2. Let's try that on our calculator. 39.2 minus another 9.8, and it will only be moving at 29.4 meters per second. Notice that our ball is still moving upwards, but it's slowing down by 9.8 meters per second every second. If we continue this, maybe you guessed it. Three seconds into the rock's motion, it will again be moving 9.8 meters per second slower. So 29.4 minus 9.8 means we're moving now at a speed of 19.6 meters per second, even slower than before. If we keep subtracting 9.8 meters per second every second, eventually the speed will get to zero. And that will mean that the rock has reached the highest point in its path. At that point, it's gonna start turning back around and it will speed up at 9.8 meters per second every second on its way back down. So when you're dealing with free fall, free fall can mean that something is falling and picking up speed or gaining 9.8 meters per second of speed every second. Or it can mean that it's being thrown upwards and that it's losing 9.8 meters per second of speed for every second that it moves. But to finish up, we see that this is true for any object as long as air resistance is not involved. Because as Galileo showed us, the mass or the weight of an object does not affect how quickly it picks up speed. The only thing that matters is whether or not it's experiencing air resistance and which planet it's on. Because on Earth, the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared, meaning any object is gonna change its velocity by that amount for every second that it's in free fall. Thanks for watching.